I was recently listening to Thinking of You, a French house classic by the duo Dynamic Rockers. The track is a catchy filter house tune with a simple bass line layered on top of a loop. I really like the track, but whenever I listen to it, I go back to the sample to appreciate a little piece that they used as their main melody. Sometimes small details can really make the track so much more interesting. Just take a listen to the main loop after the drop. You hear that synthesized voice that seems to say music over and over? Well, it's only played once in the original and it's barely a second long. Take a listen to this. You hear it? One more time. Now, I'm not exactly sure if they recreated it or did some filtering, but I think it's cool that you can use such a small piece of sound for an entire song. The sample is Distinction, That's the Way I Like It, released in 1982 on Hansa Records. I'm willing to bet that the group Dynamic Rockers grabbed this piece from the 2003 compilation Rare Funky Groove Volume 3. It's where I discovered the track initially. Thinking of You was released two years following this, so I think that makes sense. I was browsing the Discogs page for the band Distinction, and I noticed a few things. First off, That's the Way I Like It was produced by Roy Carter, who is mostly known from his involvement in Heatwave. He's out of the UK and was fairly influential to the sound of the time. While Roy has not put out much himself, it's even more strange that his only release is apparently an Italian disco record which never made it past promo. I'm sorry, but I'm not willing to shell out 100 bucks for a mysterious 7-inch that's almost certainly not a hit. I'm really curious though, how did he end up working in Italy? Roy has done quite a few cool tracks. His most prominent production outside of Heatwave would certainly have to be Central Line, Walking Into Sunshine. Larry LeVan really took the track to the next level, but you can really hear Roy's sound. Maybe you heard this track in GTA 5. If you can't hear what I'm referring to as his sound, I've got a few other examples. Can you start to hear the similarities? Here, check out second image. Better take time. I think what I like most about Roy's productions is that they have big fat synths and are really just a perfect sound of the time. His bass lines are always large, deep and evolving, and the drums are big but not too loud. When you think of funky 80s tunes, you should think of Roy Carter's productions. It's nice he was able to apply his touch to the sound of distinction, even if it was just for one song. Listening to the intro, all of the trademarks I mentioned above are present. The big drums, the fat bass lines, and the classic synths. Another thing I noticed when looking into Distinction was the other releases they put out were on a relatively obscure label called N.A. Records. The sole release of note on the label seems to have been Design, How to Do It. As a fun aside, Design's track is featured on Rare Funky Groove Volume 9.
The primary producer on this label was Warren Livesey, who was working on distinction and design productions off the side of his desk as the majority of his work was with rock and pop artists. I realize now that design and distinction are both the same group. Searching on Discogs, I found pictures of both of them. Warren was involved with the production of several tracks of theirs, but only mentioning this would be selling them short. In the 90s, he ended up moving to Canada and produced Matthew Goodband's seminal album, Beautiful Midnight. If you're Canadian, you almost certainly know of their songs as they were massive hits and influenced Canadian music for some time. I don't mean to get distracted here, but seriously, how am I talking about Matthew Goodband in a video about samples? From distinction to Matthew Good, Warren has certainly had an interesting career path, and Matthew Good was only a fraction of his success. Okay, back to what I think I was originally talking about. For a band with seven members who was never able to release an album, Distinction was a pretty interesting group. My best guess was that they submitted some demos to a few labels and had one of them pick up their first release, That's the Way I Like It. The label Hansa put a bunch of money behind the release and got Roy Carter to produce it. When the track was not as big as they expected, subsequent plans were changed. It's very possible that after they released their first single, Hansa dropped them and someone signed the group to NA Records. I'm not sure if Warren was part of the label outside of being a producer, but he produced two of their subsequent singles and worked with them as design on two singles as well. It seems that the NA label was releasing exclusively tracks by the group under two names. Maybe they set up the label and hired producers themselves. With any group, it seems that luck and timing may have played a factor in deciding their fate. Maybe the labels didn't understand the audience the band played to and promoted the track in the wrong places, or maybe the music just didn't stand out. The group continued to try to find a hit with their change to design, but even with the epic horns and catchy chorus, they were never able to find their place in pop culture. In any case, if things were different, they could have become the next loose ends. And there you have it, a small glimpse into a group who reached varying levels of success, and the only way I would have found them was by researching the sample. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any thoughts in the comments, and see you next time.